this issue of when something comes against something that you hold dear. You can't just carry on saying, but I just want to focus on the good thing, the positive. We all want to focus on the positive. If you want to focus on the positive, you have to defend it against the negative. That's what happens. If you have a war, if someone invades your country, you don't say, let's just focus on how wonderful our country is. Well, yes, amen, let's do that. Let's do that by defending the country against the invader. So, Dr. Aaron Edwards, it's so good to talk to you again. Now, for those of you who don't know you, um, we probably need to cover uh, a little bit about your backstory before we cover what's been happening uh, recently. And for those who don't know us, well, we're Coalition for Marriage. Um, We uh, represent tens of thousands of individuals up and down the country who support this thing, man, woman, marriage. I think it's special. I think it's unique. We think it needs championing and raising its profile uh, in society. We think it's what the definition of marriage is. It defines what only one man and one woman can do. Doesn't mean other things don't take place or can't take place in a liberal democracy. And that's a whole separate conversation, Aaron, from the biblical precincts, which we'll be talking about today. Um, But marriage is important. And I know you're a firm supporter of that. And that's why it's great to talk to you as well. But Aaron, first of all, could you tell us very briefly, bring everybody up to speed who might not be familiar with your case up to this point? Sure. Yeah. And thanks for having me on again, Tony. It's always great to catch up with you at various events and, uh, and to come on the podcast again. Absolutely. I think you, your, your, your Coalition for Marriage is doing great stuff. We think we desperately need the recovery of traditional marriage in this society. It's, you can see the effects of it everywhere. Back uh, 18 months ago, tweeting, I was a lecturer in a Bible college, evangelical Bible college in the UK. I tweeted something defending well, defending biblical marriage and, and challenging homosexuality invading the church. That was a line that I had in the tweet that caused a lot of controversy. And basically, and I had other things in that tweet basically saying why it's such an important issue and why we shouldn't be um, so worried about what people will say about us that we don't challenge it happening. It's quite obvious that we need to challenge it if we believe um, in scripture and if we believe in uh, the truth of what marriage is and isn't. And and not only to believe in it positively, but to challenge uh, it's negative. So homosexuality is not something that should be tolerated uh, within the church. It's not something that God smiles upon and thinks is good. It's it's a bad thing. It doesn't mean you attack people who are uh, gay. It just means actually you are trying to uh, ensure you do everything to challenge that idea coming in and that practice and that uh, way of thinking to say that this is actually okay, now, which is increasingly happening in the, in the historic denominations. So I did that, challenged that. I got fired two weeks later from a job I'd been in uh, for seven years it caused an even greater uproar um, for the college as a result because of more support for me publicly. That <laughs> um, there's a lot of some, uh, people against me initially, especially within the Methodist Church that the college was linked to, and then that's ultimately why they fired me for causing them disrepute. They caused themselves ten times the disrepute by then firing me and also publicly denouncing my tweet before they even spoke to me about it. So it caused it caused a, lot, a huge controversy. I think the tweet was seen by millions of people in the end. Um, I, I heard this in the in the tri- in court in the tribunal on the other side had said uh, done the kind of deep dive on the statistics on on the the full reach of the tweet um and it was yeah so we took it took them to an employment tribunal with the great help of the Christian legal center Christian concerns Excellent. legal arm that have been really really great but so 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 supportive so thankful for the work of Andrea Williams and, and all the team there brilliant and um, so we took it to an employment tribunal end of May early June this year. And I thought it went really well. I think I just thought we acquitted ourselves very well. We, um, you know, I think I said everything I wanted to say. I think the college embarrassed themselves uh, in their defence um, in so many ways. They contradicted themselves on the stand, give, giving evidence. I just couldn't believe that then when we got the judgment at the end of July, it was a unanimous dismissal of our case. It was on all four counts of uh, direct, indirect religious discrimination and. Um, harassment and uh, unfair dismissal. I thought at the very least, if they don't want to, if they don't want to cause any controversy by setting a precedent, the, the tribunal panel might have at least given unfair dismissal because it's just really obvious the way that the college went about it was really, um, really, really poor. And that was shown up in the trials in so many ways, so many contradictions of things they said. The person who did the investigation on me was quoted in, a, in the minutes of a meeting that morning saying that he, he thought I was already guilty of gross misconduct. Um, and, and then he was given the impartial investigation of deciding whether or not I was guilty of gross misconduct for violating their social media policy. Um, my defense had been, oh, I, well, I'm 
I'm defending what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm, I'm lecturing on preaching and theology and mission. And this is a space, Twitter is a space where, or X now is a space where that's really important. That's the public marketplace, the Agora. And it's just interesting reading the the, the uh, kind of 30-odd page uh, judgment, which is quite short, a short judgment, um, du dubiously so, apparently, I'm told. I don't know I don't know too much about employment tribunal proceedings, thankfully. But um, yeah, it was. It just basically summarised the arguments, really, and almost just accepted the college's positions as read, and it um, went against. And, and then, and then, just just citing it, just all that the, the the claimant me says he thinks of the Twitter as a as a space where where these conversations need to need to be happen. I was like, yeah, I argued for that. I have argued for that in academic articles and in lectures, saying this is a the equivalent of the marketplace. Social media yes. is where these these yes. the ideas exchange. It's happening. It's a huge revolution. Uh, it was amazing to me that the judge and the panelists knew nothing about Twitter. Like literally, mm. they said that we don't know anything really? about it. You need to explain to us what is a quote tweet. What does it mean to retweet? And I was like, really? Like we have you're wow. adjudicating. This yeah. is all about a tweet. You yeah. don't even know how Twitter works, and you're making yeah. a judgment on whether or not this is is appropriate for a lecturer on preaching yeah. to speak. Proclam in, in proclamatory prophetic tones, as it were, on these issues mm. that are really important. They didn't understand many, much of the Bible. We had to read the mm. Bible out. The judge said, "Can you? Ha we need to have these in front of us. I'm not aware of what these these verses are. You know, <laughs> quite yeah. like, quite quite well known yeah. verses, well often. Yeah. And so I was just kind yeah. of like, this is it's amazing what you're dealing with, really, in, in, the, in terms of the difference in the justice system. The, the ignorance, Aaron. Mm. The ignorance. Right. So the the ignorance of of now, whatever your, because we've got people from all faiths and none, right? Most of our supporters are Christians, as you'd imagine, but there's a lot of people at other faiths, a lot of people with no faith at all. But everyone will say, yeah, we can see that our legal system is kind of built on some foundations which come from somewhere. And 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 you'd think in order to be a, a, in, a, in a position, even a tribunal judge, which I know they're kind of junior judicial positions, but nevertheless, you'd expect them to kind of know the basic on which the justice system was built you know and the environment on which the idea that we're, we're all equal before the law where did that come from you know you'd expect them to know that sort of and not say well we're not familiar with the bible or anything else like that it's quite ridiculous it's it's astonishing isn't it yeah i, I, I did ask a, a solicitor how, i mean when did that change he said well it was only probably a generation ago that a judge would have needed to know a significant amount about the Bible, just just purely to know something about the foundations of uh, yeah, of the legal system itself in in, in Britain. Um, and there's still all sorts of hints about uh, of it, even if, even if people have technically forgotten so much, it, it's still embedded there. So even if people don't like the fact that the Bible is significant, it still is actually in, in, it informs much of the way that we think. But it's just slowly being eroded. Outside of that, right? I mean, I. There's two conversations here, isn't there? There's the conversation about, you know, homosexuality in a pluralistic society. That's one conversation. And I would approach that from the marriage and the evidence around marriage. You know, the idea that what a man and a woman can do and growing up with a biological mum and dad brings about the kind of outcomes from an evidence base which are worth promoting and not and and not relegating to the sorts of things which many many teachers tell me they're told not to mention in school it's absurd so that's that's one conversation but then the other conversation about the the biblical approach you know the bible's fairly clear about these things um <clears throat> and we've got an equality act which which respects people's religious opinions and it also respects people's sexual orientations and therein lies a little bit of a conflict and it seems to me that the the the, the judges in so many cases if you look at yourself you look at bernard bernard randall um you look at people um like felix and gole all of these wonderful people incidentally as you mentioned are supported by the 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 wonderful yeah. christian legal center yeah. and a andrea in fact who you mentioned uh, a lot of people might not know this is is one of my trustees so so it's it's fantastic that the, there is this group of people standing up for those things it's brilliant but there's almost like this this tension in the legal system between conflicting rights but yeah i wonder i'm not a lawyer aaron and, and neither are you, but I wonder, you know, we've got things like the Public Order Act, Section 29JA, which, which actually says, look, 
discussing and disagreement over sexuality, uh, marriage or the parties to a marriage, you know, gay marriage, same, whatever, that's not in and of itself deemed to to indicate hate or, or, or promote any kind of aggression or anything else like that. If you're just discussing those things sensibly, it's actually expressly permitted by law, which is, and you were stating a fact in your tweets, you know, that the, the, um, homosexuality is infiltrating the Church of England. And, and that's, a, that's an objective fact. Look at the living in love and faith discussion, which is pulling the organization apart. It, it's not something of dispute. So I, I don't know. I mean, was there anything in the ruling that you could say, oh, yeah, I can see their point there or something? Yeah, no, it, it, generally, it was almost read. It was very odd to me. It read almost like Cliff College had written it. <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> I guess that's what it yeah. would be if it's entirely in favor of their side. So I don't want to be, it's not like sour grapes or anything. It's just like, it's just it's just surprising to me because it just seemed we had so much obvious evidence that this is a discrimination against this this way of expressing the view and the view being being linked to the expression of it and I think together I think due to ignorance of these the, the nuances of these issues the college could say the principal of Cliff College could say I I have the same view as Aaron he doesn't when I first met him. Uh, six years seven about seven years ago now probably he, he came in a cut a year or a bit a year and a bit after i'd arrived at, at the college <clears throat> and he went around and in, he had a chat with everyone to see where they're at he'd already obviously heard about me being conservative <laughs> and and this is a conservative bible college i, I thought you know this is an evangelical college so i'm, I'm, I'm he's heard things and he's like, you know, I've, uh, he said, oh, I'm, and we talked about the methodist situation whether that might happen whether that you know might affect uh, well, what might happen if Methodism decides to vote on gay marriage in the future? We still not. It wasn't at all clear there, but the, maybe the writing was on the wall. Some would say. And he said, "Oh yeah, I'm I'm traditional on marriage. I, I've, I've, uh, I'm conservative on marriage. I'm probably not as conservative as you, Aaron." He said that to me, and I thought, "What, what does that mean? That means. Yeah, what does exactly. it mean to be? I'm conservative about marriage, but you're probably more conservative. I.e." Does that mean you think that same-sex marriage isn't that big a deal? It mean, does it mean you wouldn't bother talking about it much? Is it sinful or is it not sinful? They don't ever want to express the negative. They just want to say, we're traditional. And so technically, I believe in um, heterosexual marriage. So do you. So therefore, we have the same views. And no, we don't, actually. You don't think this is a problem that affects this. You don't really believe in upholding marriage because you don't want to do anything to oppose those things that come. It's like saying, I love my children, but if an attacker comes, I'm not going to bother uh, attacking, uh, uh, defending them against the attacker, because I, I I love them though. We all love our children, don't we? But I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to let him do yeah whatever. It's outrageous to say that you, you to believe something is to express it, and also to express sometimes where appropriate, um, and uh, in in cer certain situations a a negative and a, and a criticism or a critique of that which would undermine the belief that you hold. There are those who would say, look, in in order to to love something, you've got to understand what it means to hate the opposite you know which which is very interesting exactly and, and funnily enough I'll just i'll just pull up a line actually the principal considered that the claimant's tweet was abhorrent indefensible and an appalling way to describe the lgbtqi plus community within the methodist church and i thought well <laughs> i didn't describe the lgbtqi plus community within the methodist church. i said homosexuality is invading the church capital c and I was really predominantly referring to the Church of England there. It had already invaded the Methodist Church. Um, and it's not talking about the community. It's saying homosexuality, not homosexuals are invading. Of course, there are going to be people who are homosexuals and they may be within the church. But that's a whole other conversation, actually, whether you can say, oh, I'm a proud gay person and I'm a Christian. That's I don't think that's actually possible. Yeah, yeah. All of the but but yeah, just yeah. to say homosexuality is invading the church is just a fact, as you say. Um, but it wasn't a way of describing them. But then the principal then made, he, he doubled down and actually went even further on his rhetoric in his witness statement to say um, this was abhorrent, indefensible, like a horrible way to describe the, the LGBTQI community. I just think, again, it's just pandering to the leftist kind of... Um, agenda within society which wants you to say certain things wants you to apologize for everything whether or not you've done anything wrong and of course you should apologize if you've done something wrong but not if you've done something right or if you believe you're, you're standing you can defend your your view that's really important we do that we, we were talking before um we we were recording um about um the shepherds for sale book oh yeah and it's quite interesting because the, the, 
the, yeah, there's there's um, uh, 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 a section in that which talks about the, the so, somebody's requirements on Christians to be sacrificial like Christ was in sacrificing what they believe for the benefit <laughs> of others. <laughs> and you think, nice try. Yeah, but I'm right. not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure that helps anyone. It's astonishing, really. isn't it? Yeah. What, what, what of the, one of those things? I think one of the things she pulls up, which I think he responded to, is J.D. Greer, who is president of the SBC. Um, the Southern Baptist Convention, the largest Protestant denomination in, in, the, in the US, um, and he'd and he'd said, you know, God, he, he uh, I forget the exact quote now, I should remember it, but like he, you know, he thunders, God thunders about these kinds of things, like issues of injustice, about poverty or something, but he just he whispers about sexual whispers, sin, yeah, yeah, sexual, and, he, and he's like, in, the, in the Bible, I don't think Sodom and Gomorrah <laughs> saw it that way. I don't think that's how Jude uh, describes it when he talks of, um, you know, that that they were extreme, ext- extremely. Um, offensive ways that the Bible speaks about uh, these issues. It's not. It's not something to be tolerated at, at all. And and it's far more significant than people realise. So it's not. It's not about tonnage of verses that speak about it. It's about what those verses convey. What kind of view would you get of homosexuality or any sexual immorality from reading the way the Bible speaks about it? Not a positive one. Um, and 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 precisely because um, the, the biblical authors, inspired by the Holy Spirit, are are trying to are prophetically speaking about precisely what we've been saying, this issue of when something comes against something that you hold dear. You can't just carry on saying, but I just want to focus on the good thing, the positive. We all want to focus on the positive. If you want to focus on the positive, you have to defend it against the negative. That's what happens. If you have a war, if someone invades your country, you don't say, let's just focus on how wonderful our country is. Well, yes, amen, let's do that. Let's do that by defending the country against the invader. That's the way we talk. So we've talked about that in ideological terms uh, rather than in, in individual people. We're, we're saying these, there are all sorts of ideologies which are invading, which we have to be boldly standing up against. You're thinking about appeal, as, no, we are. as I understand. Yeah, we are. Great, we are. which is fun. And in many ways, um, that's good because then this whole ridiculous debacle goes to a higher court and sets an even greater precedent. Um, so, and again, you're supported by the wonderful Christian Legal Center, which hats off you know, changing life. And a lot of people don't realize this. They might be a bunch of Christians, but actually they're, they're talking about freedom of belief, freedom of conscience, freedom of speech for everyone. Yes. Uh, not exactly. just Christians. And, and it's fundamentally important. You know, it does, it, it forms the basis and the heart of any democracy. Unless you can speak openly and talk about things which are on your mind, you can't really have a democratic system. You know, and and it's being challenged all over the place today. So, hats hats off to people like you, Aaron. Uh, I I know it's going to be hard for you and for your family. You got a wife. You got six kids. Um, you know, it, it, people don't think of the human cost of people who are going through these things. But well done to you. Um, there's a lot of people behind you. Um, and uh, if people want to keep up with you, where can they go to do that? How can they follow you? How can they get in touch if they want to? I've been well. I've been known to say some things on Twitter, so uh, or X, so. Uh, <laughs> oh, is that so? <laughs> there's one there. Yes, you can find me on Twitter on Aaron underscore P underscore Edwards is my handle there, um, yeah. and then there's also my Substack, which is thatgoodfight.substack.com. In fact, actually, you mentioned the the Christian Legal Center, Christian Concern. I, I did a couple of long pieces on my tribunal experience. It's my first time in court. And it was just really interesting. So it's very green. So people who, I guess, are used to the legal system, go, oh, yes, of course, I'm very familiar with this. But to me, it was all very interesting observing it as a first timer. And it was uh, it, so much was unfamiliar. But it, it gave it, yeah, it gave rise to lots of reflection on justice and the legal system itself and how the processes work and these kind of things. So, yeah, if they're interested in those issues particularly, I've got a couple of articles called An Evangelical in Court part one and part two on, on that on the that good fight dot substack dot com so they can look into those issues there well we'll put we'll put that address up we'll we'll mm-hmm. direct people towards that and if people want to support you they can get hold of you from that page i'm sure yeah they can yeah uh, follow you and support you yes um aaron come back when you've when you've got your victory at the next round <laughs> and we'll, we'll talk further amen um but but meanwhile just keep up that good fights thank you, you to know, you too brother it's, it's been wonderful to in the interest yeah. of everyone yeah, it's yeah. good. It's good. It's great. As I said, it's really great to connect with you again. I think you're you're fighting the good fight, and we're all, there's all so many different people fighting the good fight on there so are. many different fronts, there aren't are. there? Yeah, and it's not about the numbers. Mm, absolutely. You know, so yeah. great. Listen, keep it up, and thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Tony. Uh, Doctor Aaron Edwards.